So are you thinking of selling your home and wondering what this staging thing is all about? That's what we're talking about. Hi, welcome back. I'm Michelle Carolla with Living in Midwest Life and Realtor with Sprinkman Real Estate Group here in the Madison, Wisconsin area. I am back again with a favorite topic, which is always anything to do with design. With the team from the Sprinkman Design Collective, I have Tyler Sweary and Megan Bumgardner. They are our resident experts here at Sprinkman and love having you guys on. And we're talking about something really important today. We're talking about staging. So I think for a lot of people, when you think of the word staging, you might just think about when you're watching maybe the flip shows and they're, you know, a blank canvas, then they'll have these big teams come in and they spend, you know, 12, 15, 20 thousand dollars bringing a whole home together. Okay, so that's the extreme of staging, right? Let's <laughs> yes. just say that's yeah. all the way to the Z level. <laughs> yes. Don't have to do that. <laughs> There are lots of levels, which we will unpack today, but let's just start with the basic first. Why does someone want to stage their home? So the biggest reason staging your home, um, there's a couple stats out there. So 75% of homes that are staged sell faster, 90% have an increased interest, so great, getting more people through the door, mm -hmm. and 83% have a higher sale price. That's crazy. Those stats are sort of like, eh, you can't really argue with that, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, it's simple. I mean, so staging, it, like you said, there's so many ways that you can go with it, but just having a couple of tweaks here and there can have a, an exponential response to well, how you, your home will sell. Well, you said we were talking off camera. You had a home recently that you did something as simple as paint. How did, Walk them through how that worked. Totally. So we had a, a <laughs> property that was, I would say, stuck in the early 2000s, very Venetian. So mm -hmm. really rich red walls, strong beiges, some muddy browns and very dark. But this place had beautiful well, cathedral ceilings. So much Great potential. potential. Just needed to be alleviated a little bit. There, your eye couldn't really go anywhere. It was just or too went heavy. everywhere. Too heavy everywhere. <laughs> chaos. <laughs> okay. It was chaos. So we picked some very nice neutral paint colors for a couple thousand dollars. It sold w within a week after painting, That's and it amazing. was on the market for like months. See, that right there goes to show something as simple as painting, whether you have the team come in and do it or whether you design it for them and say, mm -hmm. you can even do it, right? Mm -hmm. Various ways of getting it done. But look at the power of that and selling that property that's set on the market for months, right? Yeah. right. Well, so staging again, I'm talking about the levels of staging, starting with maybe something as simple as paint. You can also back it up one step prior to painting, which is... Decluttering. Big decluttering, <laughs> exactly. Let's talk about that a little bit. Right, so the main thing um, with dealing with selling your house is the decluttering process and depersonalizing everything. So as great as they are, those family mementos, the family photos, anything that has personalization to each your home, it's really important to remove that so that gives the vision to new buyers coming in of how they can envision it to make it their space. So really misconception is staging and tier design is they do go hand in hand, but they aren't necessarily the same thing. Mm -hmm. Just because of course we think your stuff is gorgeous and it's placed on the walls and it's it's your home, but that's you're trying to sell it. It's right. not yours anymore. Well, hopefully it will not be yours that's in the goal, goal though, right? <laughs> that's that's right. So and packing starts now. So you would be beneficial to just start packing up your things, minimize a lot of the distractions, the decor, the paint, and you have your clutter that are just sitting around, kids' toys. It's really important to tuck those things away to give those buyers a fresh vision of where they see themselves living. Well, and that's the power of like the model homes that we go in, right? There, there's nothing personal in a model home. It's all things that they have, you know, very strategically appointed in each space to make it maximize that space. Right. But you feel everyone that walks into a model home can feel like, oh, I could live here, right? Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. part of the the like the psychology behind it, right? right? The appeal of it. Right. Right. Yes, exactly. And if you see someone's, you know, kids' soccer pictures, and you feel like, oh, I'm in someone's house, I shouldn't be here. Right. You know, right. it's like right. there's that thing mm -hmm. there. Yeah, it's kind of an uncomfortable thing of should I be walking through the hallway or going to the bedroom yeah. part or is exactly. this okay? So it's just about making the buyer feel as comfortable and as at home as possible. Okay, so then we talked about some of the reasons like the stats, yeah, how you can sell it faster for more money. Um, you know, that's just a proven fact. 
But as far as, let's get back to the levels aspect. So we're talking about the decluttering, and I like the point where you're packing early, right? right. You're assuming that sale it is going to sell, and you've already started your packing, so when it does sell, you have less to do. So that's a good thing. And, you know, it's easier for the, the realtor from our side. It's easier to show that property and help you get it sold faster. So we've started with decluttering, and then we've maybe gone to like a paint consultation, something as simple as changing the colors on the wall and just bringing it to current day colors. So say someone does that, but uh, you go to their home, you do the consultation, and you see there's a couple of different ways they could really maximize the opportunity. Let's talk about some of those. What would be next after paint? <laughs> next after paint, I would say is decor slash furniture and furniture placement. Okay. Um, so a big thing is when you live in your home, you sometimes tend to stay with the way it was, or like you put it in one spot and it stays there. Well, maybe that is not the best layout for an incoming home buyer. Maybe they have kids and they need more space for furniture. So it's all about making your home feel larger and more open. So sometimes with that extra side table that is in the living room, maybe you don't need it. So mm -hmm. storing that away or that extra console table that's in the hallway that you put decor on, maybe it's about taking it away. I think the biggest thing with staging or what I tell people when I'm going through in a staging is less is often more. Oh yeah. So mm -hmm. all those things, again, it's back to that decluttering, mm -hmm. but even with furniture, um, maybe not having that extra bulky recliner in the living room anymore, it's probably better if it just goes away. So if you have a rummage <laughs> sale, <laughs> yeah, magic, right? Otherwise, <laughs> store it in the basement or put it on Facebook Marketplace, exactly. things like that. Right. But, well, you know, another thing you're saying, like when you mentioned like the little end table, maybe that works when you're watching your movie and you need a place to put your popcorn and your drink. <laughs> but when I'm coming through as the realtor or the designer, I'm bumping into that. It's cutting off the flow of the room. And I just now right. shrunk the room, right? Mm -hmm. Right. You bring up a great point. That comes back to functionality of a room and it's serving its purpose. Another thing we try to remember going through staging is every room should have a purpose. It's a one mm -hmm. purpose. It's not an office with an elliptical and a yoga yeah. mat, but also some... I know, we all live that way. I know, right? But again, that is hard for someone to create the vision of how are they going to use this space if there's just such a bunch of stuff in it. So try to keep in mind that anything that's in your home should be intentional, and if it's not serving its purpose... Gotta go. Gotta Whether it go. goes, like you said, in the marketplace, <laughs> or, or maybe it goes in a box in a storage space. Right. Or yeah. it gets moved somewhere else in your house. That's another big thing. Is just Just yes. shifting around furniture. As Tyler was saying, people move their furniture into one position, and you're not an interior designer. You're not just creative and coming up with ideas of, oh, let's switch this around. So you kind of have a hard time of seeing past that. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to take these pieces, and sometimes they'll fit somewhere else better. They're in a better spot for it. Yeah. And then say you have um, a situation where you've moved out of your home and your job transferred you early and the home didn't sell and now the home's completely vacant. That, it, you might think that's a good thing, but honestly it is not for a sell, a potential buyer coming through. It is not a good thing, is it, right? Mm -hmm. So that's where we're going to get into some really heavy staging, but that's something that you can do. Right. So when it comes to that, that is like, getting towards Z, like you're That's talking getting about. That's getting towards Z, right? Getting towards Z because if you have nothing in there, it's like how does the person going through the home envision that they're going to live there? So yeah. maybe there's this, this awkward maybe den space. Well, is it an office? Is it a dining room? Is it a kid's playroom? I don't know how I'm feeling if I'm walking through the home. Mm -hmm. So it's all about, like we said, making a purpose for it. Um, so that is definitely something that we can always help people with and advise maybe purchasing some furniture for this area or another and really pinpointing the the most important spaces because clearly sometimes a guest bedroom, well, we know it's a bedroom, but it's about like that dinette or that den or office and how you're designating those spaces and what furniture will work best in there. So. That's right. And then so when we're also talking about budget, so this may seem like a lot. You may think, well, I need to sell my home. I need every dollar out of my home to get to the next home or for my move or whatever the reason is you're selling your home. How am I going to put down thousands and thousands of dollars to bring them in to help sell it faster? So let's just break that out a little bit. How, does, how would you suggest people manage that? Well, the best place to start is the first sign console is the hour is free. So we will walk through your entire home with you and tell you of 
our advice of what you should be removing or what can stay or what definitely needs to be done. And it's really candid to have a open conversation about what you're willing to spend and what you want out of this house. Because then from there, we can tell you the priorities of maybe you don't need to paint this, like you said, the side guest room. It's already like an off-white, but this great room that's red has got to be neutralized. Mm -hmm. So it's a great spot to start with just design consult. If you're feeling overwhelmed, it's where you can lean to us of where to prioritize your changes that you're implementing. Well, and so, uh, you know, in again, thinking about um, maybe you think, okay, I need a certain dollar amount for the sell. And then if I'm going to spend five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand dollars or whatever the price is on staging, that's coming off the, the price of my uh, profit. Well, at the same time, then you most likely, no guarantees, but you most likely will sell the home for more money, which will then back that out, right? Yeah, exactly. And another important thing to note is the market is changing right now. So the importance of staging is, exp I mean, it's the utmost important right now because mm -hmm. before you could put your home up for sale and not even clean the kitchen or the bathrooms and you'd get 10 offers. Literally. <laughs> Literally. In the first hour. So now it's all about making sure that your home is, I mean, the best out there. So you want to make it look the best. It is clean. It is ready to go because you want to get all those buyers through the door, as many as possible. So yes. staging is just crucial and how we could help prioritizing is we're there. We, we can help with that. Yeah. And he brings up a really, really good point. So, you know, we're sitting in a changing market right now. The past two years, if you were a seller and you're watching this, you're thinking, oh, I didn't even literally <laughs> clean the kitchen. My house sold in an hour. Well, that's just not the case right now. We're in a different market. If you are thinking of putting your home on the market, this is something that you really have to have a, a hard talk with yourself, with your partner, whoever is in the home with you and figure out how you can make this happen only because it's just part of selling a home right now right it really is it's, it's, it is a crucial element yeah, so so okay so if we're thinking about prioritizing like you said you have a handy dandy little list right that can make it very helpful I certainly do okay <laughs> tell us how it's that not works our first rodeo, so <laughs> right. we're tending to see a lot of the houses we go through it's a lot of the same things redundancies of decluttering cleaning personalization paint you know also Keep in mind of your exterior space as you're walking up to a house. That's the yes. first thing someone's going to see. So if you're, you know, not even cleaning up your leaves or anything, that's again something that we will point out to you to help you get all the top dollar. Out. And a fresh welcome mat. And a fresh welcome mat. Easy as And some mums. <laughs> and some mums. <laughs> Perfect. So then um, do you actually have a list that you would then share with a person? Say, okay, you have around this amount of money to spend. Here's what we would suggest you do. Yeah, so okay. when we have one of our first meet, or I should say the first meeting that we have, we kind of have like this breakdown list, or I should say we're working on this breakdown list of when you, or when we leave, you can just say, yep, check, got this, yep, check, got this, because they're all, there are a lot of things that when we leave, you can tackle on your own. Absolutely, yeah. So it's all about trying to give you these manageable tasks that you can handle outside of it, again the decluttering, or if you do paint on your own. And another tip that I like to always tell people is don't be afraid to get quotes from people. So if you need some landscaping done, call your local landscaper. If you need painting done, call your local painter, have them give you an estimate because it's always better to know the price instead of being scared mm -hmm. or the sticker shock of it. Mm -hmm. So always relying on your local um, vendors or whoever it may be that can help with those things. Which you can also recommend. Which we can also help out if that yes. isn't something you can take on at the moment. We are happy to recommend the services that we think are needed or if you need just a reliable source. Yeah, absolutely. Well, bottom line, they are a fantastic resource. It's something that you really have to think about if you're trying to sell your home. It really does make all the difference. So thank you guys again. Thank you. Yes. Fun. I can't wait. <laughs> We're going to have them back all the time. As many times as you want to come back. Just, just feed me topics. Everybody loves design topics. Yes. Oh, my goodness. If you're loving this video, you might really love the first video that we did, which was why hire an interior designer. You can go back and watch that as well. And if you haven't subscribed, or liked our channel, that would be super, super appreciated. But for now, I'm Michelle Carolla with Living in Midwest Life, and we'll see you next time.